Hello everybody, my name's Philippa Kay, better known as Pip Kay, and I'm here today to talk to you about my debut novel, Girl Detectives Just Want to Have Fun. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the Dark and Jung people on whose land I work and play, and the Gadigal on whose land my fictitious character, Bertie Mealy, works and plays, and the Bidjigal people of Southwest Sydney. I grew up in Reesby, which is in Southwest Sydney, and I moved to the Central Coast, Dark and Jung land, where I've been for just over 20 years. I write Girl Detectives Just Want to Have Fun as a response to a number of big events that were happening in the world. The summer bushfires of 2020, COVID and lockdowns, Trump and his cronies leading the world, and the influence of social media, which has recently been named as the main cause of mental health in um, people aged 20 to 25. It was a time when the world had gone a little bit crazy and I was feeling overwhelmed, and so were a lot of people. I wanted a story that was light, provided escapism, a little bit of romance, and more importantly, a lot of fun. Girl Detectives Just Wanna Have Fun is set in the 80s, an era in which I grew up, and I thought things were much simpler. Or were they? My protagonist, Bertie Mealing, is a music teacher, a music therapist for retirees, a musician who plays in a band, and her uncle goes missing. Being the cheeky, determined woman that she is, she turns amateur sleuth, and with her friends, she sets off to find him. The 80s was an interesting time for women, but that doesn't stop Bertie from trying to find her uncle and having a great deal of fun along the way. I'm reading the opening scenes, which will give you a bit of an insight into the type of girl Bertie is. Sneaking out was probably too harsh a way to describe it. What Bertie was doing was called leaving while the music was still playing. She hightailed it across the lawn with her white court shoes bumping against her shoulder blade as they dangled over it, held by slippery fingertips. After all, if it had been the man staying at her house instead of the other way around, and he left at 4.30 in the morning without saying goodbye, no one would bat an eyelid. Scoring was what it would be called, a route, and there would probably be slaps on the backs from the boys, no guilt. Bertie tiptoed across the neat, dewy sponge, neat, just like Herb had been. Ordered shelves, morning made bed, pine fresh little ensuite. Everything was ship shape, except perhaps for his bedding ability. Luckily, the boy was all over the messy place with that. Thinking about it sent a tingle that started down below and flushed over Bertie's skin. Possibly she'd left too hastily. She paused, turned. The sparkle of the rising sun hit the ocean, blinding her for a moment. A breeze lifted from the east, ruffling her hair, cooling her fire. She soaked it in. It was 1984 for ship's sake. A girl was allowed a one night stand. It was a time of liberation. And after it had just taken Bertie a good five minutes to work out how to open Herb's front door, making as little noise as possible, she met liberation in more ways than one. She turned away from the sea and continued her creeping exit. The grass crunching beneath frosted mauve toenails. She would not go back. Bertie! She froze. Please, no. Tell me that's not him. Bertie, wait. Where are you going? Shit. All right, well, <laughs> that gives you a little bit of an insight into the character of Bertie. I hope you enjoy. Girl detectives want to have fun. Um, and I hope you have fun reading it. Thanks for listening. Bye.